On today's episode, another cyber attack on industry, sustainable tires for hybrids, and the auto chip shortage gets serious. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In the latest cyber attack to affect a major part of the American manufacturing supply chain, Brazilian meat processing firm JBS halted processing at the firm's five biggest U.S. beef operations following a network attack. The U.S. plants handle over 22,000 cattle a day and represent almost 20% of U.S. production. Australian and Canadian plants were also affected. JBS reports that backup servers were not affected and that production has resumed. And the White House has issued a statement declaring that the attack originated in Russia and has called for the Putin government to find the perpetrators. The FBI, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and government agencies from both Australia and Canada have rendered assistance to recover production. JBS states that the cyber attack was against operational assets and that supplier, customer, and employee data are secure. The U.S. government has a dedicated letter agency addressing cyber attack, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA. The agency has identified primary metals, transportation, machinery, and component manufacturing, particularly electrical, as core manufacturing assets vulnerable to cyber attack. The agency also addresses food supply, however, it focuses on agriculture and supply chains. This attack may result in a rethink of where food processing fits into the critical infrastructure plan. Noteworthy to both this attack and the gas pipeline attack of two weeks ago is that the companies targeted represent weak links in the retail supply chain for critical products, impacting American consumers directly and immediately. It's unclear whether the attacks are simple extortion or part of a larger political strategy. We'll be watching. Electric vehicles are the automotive world's leading technology for low emissions driving, but the components that make them are frequently considerable pollution emitters themselves. Now, tires are no exception, but Italian tire maker Pirelli has developed a new product that is Forest Stewardship Council certified, containing natural rubber and rayon drawn from sustainable sources. FSC certification monitors the plantations that grow the essential natural latex used in high-performance auto tires and ensures that sustainable materials are separated from non-certified material throughout the production supply chain. The first products in the initiative are low-profile large-diameter tires for the BMW X5 X-Drive 45E plug-in hybrid. The SUV is specially engineered for low emissions with a model-specific 3.0-liter inline six-cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine and BMW's fourth generation of electric motor technology. The tires are part of BMW's full-cycle CO2 certification for the Hybrid X5, which extends from raw material procurement, supply chain manufacturing, and the use phase through to end-of-life and vehicle recycling. All major tire makers and most major automakers have formed a trade association called the Global Platform for Sustainable Natural Rubber, including Pirelli and the BMW Group. Natural latex has outstanding elastomeric properties, and despite numerous advances in synthetic rubber technology over a century, typically 20% of the weight of a modern car tire is natural latex tapped from trees. Eco-friendly tires were traditionally simply a low rolling resistance design, but in the future, they'll need cradle-to-grave green credentials. With the ongoing integrated circuit shortage now crippling automotive production worldwide and with no end in sight, the automotive industry is teaming with the semiconductor industry to speed the search for a solution. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation and the Semiconductor Industry Association has set up what the organization has called a Joint Industry Workshop to address the chip shortage. Executives and manufacturing industry experts from both sectors participated. The primary result was an urgent call for immediate funding for President Biden's Chips for America Act, a bill which will federally fund American domestic integrated circuit production. Most current estimates project that the chip shortage will last until the third quarter at the earliest, and major manufacturers like Ford have stopped production lines or are storing unfinished vehicles awaiting ICs. Even electric vehicle manufacturers like Tesla are affected. While COVID-19 is the primary reason for the shortage, the semiconductor industry supply chain is not bouncing back as quickly or strongly as other goods sectors. Reasons for this are numerous, but most are based on the just-in-time nature of the global automotive supply chain. As manufacturers attempt to keep inventory as low as possible and rely on Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers to operate on lean production principles for lower overall costs. To address this, the Chips for America Act contains multiple provisions for kickstarting the U.S. industry as fast as possible. Income tax credits for semiconductor equipment and manufacturing facility investment will be available through 2026, and the bill establishes a trust fund to be allocated on reaching an agreement with foreign government partners to standardize policies related to the microelectronics industry and increase transparency in supply chains. 
The bill also authorizes the Department of Commerce to set up research and development programs to create next-generation microelectronics, including the creation of a Manufacturing USA Institute for Semiconductor Manufacturing. It's sweeping legislation, but will essentially be ready for the next crisis. Most industry experts expect that chip shortages will constrain auto production through the third quarter at least. But will the bill pass? It's sponsored by Texas Republican Congressman Michael McCall, and despite the Democratic majorities, it's likely to have wide bipartisan support. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found in our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.